Tschüss, Cannibal Skills. We're very honored to have this next guest with us. Uh, those of us who have been influenced by or appreciative of the English folk tradition, a lot of us will have come to it via, in some way, the work of this man. Um, so it's my great pleasure to introduce to you Martin Carthy, who's going to play us a song before we have a chat. Thank you, Martin.
Thank you. Martin Carthy. Martin, would you like to sit on the sofa with me or would you like to sit in your armchair? It's up to you. Here's a mic for you. So, Martin, um, for those that don't know, Martin is a really integral part of um, what we know about folk in this country since the 60s folk revival, which Martin was a very, very key part of. Uh, certainly the first English folk song that I ever heard was Scarborough Fair, sung by Paul Simon. And Paul Simon learnt Scarborough Fair, including the guitar arrangement, from Martin Carthy. Um, Oh, hello, 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 <laughs> hello. Um, he didn't actually learn the whole guitar arrangement. What he did was a, 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 a very, very clever and very an extremely subtle um, tribute to, 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 what, to, your to arrangement. what I'd done. And I was really, ultimately, I was utterly delighted. And I thought he did a fabulous job. And he's, uh, he's, he's a good man, he's not a thief. Um, in the same way as Bob Dylan is a good man, he's not a thief either, because he has the, they, they, they both of them have the <laughs> have the all fired nerve to sing a traditional song. Yeah. Oh no. Yeah. You know, oh, give me a break. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm, I have to give myself a break because I went along with it for a while because uh, there were those who wanted to who saw, saw an opportunity to make lots and lots and lots of money because uh, there was a film out called The Graduate which some of you will know about. Maybe all of you know about it. And that song was a, a, an extraordinary part of it. And uh, they made a complete idiot of me, the, these people who wanted, who wanted it. They made a complete fool of me, and I signed away the rights to it. I signed away your rights to it. What do you think? <laughs> oh, no, I'll do it. No, it, it's... Um, it's 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 a lesson you have to learn. <laughs> Getting a bit too a bit too <sighs> proprietorial about it, I suppose. Mine, mine, mine. No, and that, and that's um, and I've heard you speak in interviews before about how folk isn't about me. It's about we, about us, and the idea of music or a song belonging to the person that's singing it is is an idea quite alien to folk, isn't it? So well, it, <laughs> I wish it were. <laughs> it, it, it's not quite. It's people who people who sang, sang sang these songs years ago were very jealous of their songs. So if you if you came from a, a, another part of the county and you went into somewhere went onto somebody else's territory, you would have to understand there are certain th songs that you may not do. Because they belong to that one there or that one over there. They, they belong to that person there or that place there? That, well, both. Right. <laughs> um, it just, it, it, it's people's um, feelings shouldn't, shouldn't, get, get, shouldn't, shouldn't get disregarded, shouldn't get trodden on. Um, and they do. Uh, and this is. Um, of course, one of the things that uh, that was said by a lot of those collectors in, in those early 1900s was how valuable this stuff was, and one, you know, there was a few of the singers were, were 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 then sort of looking at them and saying, "Valuable, huh? Um, where's my share?" Yeah. <laughs> you know. Um, and yeah. I'm quite sure that there are some uh, that there, there were some the call them, excuse me using the word informants who you know, people who had songs collected from them who, f who did feel a certain uh reluctance to to deliver the whole thing so there are i'm quite sure uh, there there are ex examples of people who who started to sing a song and gave you maybe three verses and then stopped and went on to another song and sang another three verses and giving, you, giving these people a clue as to what they had. And, and this, this is really interesting because I know that one of your kind of, um, one of your works in life has been to uh, find and rebuild uh, ballads and songs from these fragments that, that we ha yeah. have access to. Yeah. Um, 
how did you come to folk as a tradition? Because I know that you didn't grow up in the folk tradition as such. Um, you, you were kind of bathed in sessions and... Um, well, um, what, what, yeah, what, what, what was your moment of first encountering the English folk tradition and finding out that there was an English folk tradition? Because I know that was a surprise to me when I came across it. I was like, we don't have traditions here anymore. Well, yeah, we do. We just have uh, Burger King. Oh, yes, we do. Um, <laughs> the th the, what happened to me was that um, I, I'd had a sort of um, peep at, at, at something I th imagined was tra traditional song when I heard, um, when I read English folk songs for schools. And then I saw and experienced the, the what I will call the real deal. Because um, an acquaintance of mine invited me to go along with him because he was going to sing at this thing. Uh, he was going to see, he offered himself as, as a support, if you want to call it that, to, to uh, Ewan McColl uh, having a particular, having his very favourite English traditional singer. Is that Sam Lana? Sam Lana. Yeah. Um, at his, at the, the club that he was organising, which was it was called it was the, called called the Ballads and Blues in those days, um, and which was very interesting because one of the first things that happened during the folk revival was, revival was that the blues was cut off from it and 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 let and sort of left behind which was a oh i might oh, sorry might not which which was a, a really dumb thing to to have allowed to happen because of course there's a direct line between uh, the english and celtic folk traditions and the blues and bluegrass oh, yeah. absolute part of the same family it's, tree it's right all exactly the same idea i mean jazz goodness sake you know new orleans jazz that's folk music it's fabulously sophisticated because sometimes it is sometimes it's really well, it's more more if you like rough and tumble but among the rough and tumble, you're going to find some jewels. And it's, if I may, if I can give, give you an example. Um, I was in, last summer, I was in, in Mallorca. And I chose to sing a particular song. It was a particular uh, poetry festival. And I chose to sing this song called A Cornish Young Man. And it's... Um, it's a real piece of fantasy. I've, I've, um, hang on, don't go away. Stop doing that. Okay. Now what are you going to do? Oh, Martin. Thank you. Right. It's a song called the C A Cornish Young Man. Uh, and it's uh, a song about. Uh, sorry, and it's a. <laughs> sorry, it's a song about love at first sight. And this it is a Cornish young man. He dreamed a dream, the most beautiful girl in the nation. No counsel he'd take, but a journey he would make into England to seek this fair creature. For seven long years he sought her all about till he came to the place where he met her. She opened the door and she stood him before. She's just some poor labouring man's daughter. And he says, I never saw you but once in my life and that was in a dream, love, lie by me. And now that I find you with tears in the eyes and a hope and that you'll never deny me. She says, whatever's the matter, young man, she replies, that you seem so, so afraid of denial. Although I am poor, I will never be whore, so put me not under a trial. No whore should you be, nor any such thing, but take this sweet kiss as a token. For love, oh my dear, is a stone in a sling, and it's hard to believe when it's spoken. So take up this ring and a guinea in gold and between us never let it be broken. For love, oh my dear, is a stone in a sling and it's hard, and it's hard to believe till it's spoken. Now, um, I think that's an absolutely enchanting, enchanting little song. 
Love, oh my dear, is a stone in a sling. Now, I, I chose to sing it in Mallorca. And somebody came up to me afterwards and had misheard it. And I said, and I can't remember what they thought it was. And I said, no, it's love, oh my dear, is a stone in a sling. And he said, what? Good God. Do you, you have to understand why I'm absolutely amazed, he said, because I'm in Mallorca. And years and years ago in Mallorca, the, the, the Mallorcan people... <laughs> would, would teach teach their children to to use the sling, and the sling was 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 the, was, the, was the chosen weapon of of um, of, of Mallorcan people, um, and they would teach them teach the children so that they could feed themselves. <laughs> so you can imagine how 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 accurate those kids were. And how how accurate, it is. but the fact that this that 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 whole culture had a, as a central thing the sling. It was the it was the Mallorcan weapon, but it was also it 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 described all sorts of other stuff, and it includes it. And it's just I found I found it, the, the coincidence didn't struck didn't strike me. Well, of course it didn't, because it, it, somebody had to come up and tell me that the that, that love, oh my dear, is a stone in a sling. Oh, we understand that because we're, we're ah, it's, a, it's that whole idea of sh the, the whole whole idea of sharing a sling, hey, sharing a sling, sharing a thought, sharing a notion, is incredibly exciting, and it, and it's and it crosses. It crosses national boundaries. It's mm, it, it's, mm. it's everywhere. It's, you're falling off. You just you just have to look for it. You'll fall over it. Like and, and, and and yeah, and incredible how many different cultures that are so different from each other ostensibly. And when you start digging into the folk traditions and the the music and uh, story traditions that have been passed down through time, I had a, a, a very much a period where I was obsessed with folk from all over. Yeah. Um, and it was always amazing to me how similar. Not only the kind of aesthetic of the the music was so there'd be a really simple accompaniment, a single drum or a single instrument, a single voice mm. um, telling a story on top of it, mm. and even how similar a lot of the melodies are when you look into you know Malian music, blues music, Scottish and Irish uh, and yeah. English folk music. Yeah. There's so much that's shared, it seems, isn't it? When you go really down to the the level of the music of the people. There's so much in common between the cultures. That's absolutely right. And, and it's, it's a beautiful it's, thing to find really, out. It's, it, it, it shakes you up. And, yeah. Um, I'd love to hear another song, Martin. Would you, would you be up for singing a song for us? Yeah. Yep. Martin Carthy. Um, beautiful. Yeah, we're going to sing you... It's... it's, um, it's what is it called? Hard, Hard Times of Old England. And it's, it, was, it was written, um, uh, this is the idea that, that Bonaparte was a bloody nuisance. Well, it, of course he was to our government. And it wasn't until very recently, well, in terms of, I've been doing this for 60 years, and much more recently, I started to actually look at the collections. And... In all those, all, the, all those collectors in the southern counties had, had, had songs about the war, various wars and they all had a large repertoire of songs about and uh, lamenting Napoleon Bonaparte and not one about Wellington. Or there is one which was written... Uh, to to to, to um, as a way of uh, getting him the job of prime minister, well, that wasn't going to affect ordinary people, so they didn't sing about that. I think it was. I think there were collections made of it. Well, there was a, there was a gypsy singer called Gordon Hall who used to sing that song. But um, none of the people who who who, ha who gave songs to Cecil Sharp and all the other collectors like the various gardeners and the Hammond brothers and uh, what's his name uh, Baron Gould 
didn't sing about Wellington, they sang about Napoleon Bonaparte. Martin Carthy. So one of the things that, that um, always strikes me about listening to music from the English folk tradition is that to me it sounds, obviously there are echoes with um, the blues music that people will be familiar with, but there are also echoes to me everywhere in where we find music of the people now, in whatever manifestation that is, obviously folk is people, music of the people. I hear the same themes coming out in hip hop music now, in grime, in drill, people talking about poverty, hardship, what it's actually like being in a place of difficulty in a way that a lot of music doesn't give us. And to me, that's one of the reasons why folk music is such an exciting tradition to understand and know about. When you hear the young, you know, the British rap artists now, they are carrying on a centuries old folk tradition that's existed in this country here. <laughs> it's not, you know, something that comes from outside or elsewhere. 
Um, and we were talking about folk existing as a kind of phenomenon that springs out similarly from cultures around the globe. The single drum, the single voice, the single guitar, the single voice. To me, this is part of the same uh, wave as hip hop music and rap music. Yeah. yeah. And um, I don't know, there's many places we could go to with that, I feel like. What is folk, how is folk evolving now? Uh, you know, in the, in the more sort of traditional sense, folk, the folk tradition, where is it now? Is it being allowed to evolve? Is it going to the places it needs to go, do you think? Is it adapting to our times? It's a very different time now. Oh, it, yes, it is. I mean, it, it does. It, it does move on with it. I, I, I've, I've gone and looked at some of the stuff I've, I've done over the last 30, 40, 50 years. And one, one thing I, I've noticed is how much the language has changed uh, and how much people like... Sorry. <laughs> how much people like me have had, had to do with the way the language has, has, has evolved. Um, I would always deny, for instance, that... It, uh, I, in fact, I did always deny that Cold Haley Windy Night was how I learned it from this particular book. And I went and had a look at it and I went and listened to my words and no, <laughs> no it was really quite different because things change and, and you have to speak, you're, you, have to, you have to find your own language. I mean, there's been a huge adventure for me and it's been, I've been... <sighs> Sort of trying stuff out and and and, and learning from it and and, and then ch 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 changing it quite abruptly and going back to what what um, what I thought was good and thinking no 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 that's no that's wrong that's 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 that and 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 that that holds good for some some of the older people <laughs> I mean even older than me folks. Um, some of the older people who 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 affected change, and there's often not always some bloody good stuff around. There's some colossal mistakes, and I was I've been right in in the forefront of some of those mistakes. But you you only learn from your mistakes. You can't no, nothing's nothing's ever going to be bloody perfect. But I'm getting better at it. As I become more and more enfeebled, um, actually getting a, a, a proper understanding of, of, of how people make stuff and then change it and change it again. It's, I, mean, I find it hugely exciting. People, people, there are people who say, no, nah, it's not that interesting. Well, it is. It is to me. It's enormously exciting. It's... Oh dear. Let me sing that. Let me sing you another song. Yeah, absolutely. Let's have another song. Whoops. Something has come to mind that illustrates that for you. Yeah. Um, this comes from a, a woman called uh, Mrs. Gladys Stone. And uh, she sang this song to. Um, to Bob Copper, when Bob Copper was uh, wor working for the BBC in you know, collecting songs. Did you hear that? Yeah, working for the BBC, collecting songs. And um, Vic Gammon gave me the song and said, go and play that on the guitar. And so, so I did. And it's, and it's gorgeous to play. It's very slightly different in each verse. The original, if you can call it, well, there is an original, because there was a sudden, in the sort of 18th century, there was a sudden fashion for five time tunes, five four tunes. Um, and so one of the things Cecil Sharp found as he went into around Somerset, and others, you know, others, others found it too, was that uh, there were songs that were in a good 5-4. Sat, sat very comfortably in 5-4. 
But then you'll find other people like Mrs. Gladys Stone who found who who learned this song, and uh, it was originally in five four, and she just just tore it apart basically, because she ended up with one absolute classic classic line in the song, which is. Um, Surely true love will laugh at locksmiths for love can break down an iron door. And she didn't do that in 5-4. But uh, I think it's one of the wonders of the... Of the uh, one of my repertoire, I love it. Thank you very much, Gladys Stone. of Shannon in a lofty mansion her father claimed great stores of gold her hair was black as the raven's feather her form and feature dissembling can there was a feather walked on the station she fell in love with this serving man as Mary Ann and her lover were walking, her father saw them and nearer drew. And as these two lovers were truly talking in anger home, her father flew. To build a dungeon was his intention, to part two lovers contrive a plan. He swore an oath and vowed intention, he Part his daughter from her serving man. So he built a dungeon of bricks and mortar with flight of steps, it was underground. The food that he gave her was bread and water, and not much cheer for her was found. Three times a day he cruelly beat her Until in anger his daughter sang If I have transgressed my own dear father I'll live and die for my serving man When Edwin saw that her habitation Was well secured by an iron door he vowed in spite of all damnation He'd gain her freedom or rest no more At the ground he soon got ready With pick and crowbar he soon began And with his plan he got in the dungeon And there he found his sweet Mary Ann and when he saw that his daughter had vanished just like a lion, her father roared. He says, from Ireland I'll have you banished, and with my broadsword I'll spill your gore. Then says young man, when you see me ready, for now I'm found her, do all you can. Forgive your daughter with a loyal pleasure, the one to blame is your serving man. When the old man saw him so tender-hearted, straight he fell down on the dungeon floor. Christ, surely true love will laugh at locksmiths, for love can bring down an iron door.
Martin Carthy. You're in tune to Scan Your Biscuits with me, Disraeli. We're at Shambhala Festival 2023. It's Sunday. People are on the floor looking rosy cheeked and sparkly eyed. And clearly been having a very good Saturday night, which might be continuing for some of you. Um, so much love, people. There is so much love here. Martin Carthy is with me on the sofa. We've got um, just another couple of minutes, actually, Martin, because we're going to have our next guest coming up in just a moment. Um, but just, uh, just a couple of words about what folk is going to mean going into this strange and uncertain future we're in. Does folk still have a living role now? Of course. Or is it this kind of museum article to be preserved and kept as it is? Oh, don't preserve it. Don't preserve it. You'll kill it stone dead. Um, you should... You, you. The thing about all this music is you're, you're, you're free to do whatever the hell you want with it. It's yours. Um, th 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 there are far, far too many thou shalt nots around anyway, aren't there? You know, uh, for me, that it's, it's not wrong to try and change a traditional song. Sometimes you're bound to do it. You must do it. Um, because, because you must. The truth is the truth. So, you know, you, there's too much interference with, the, with, 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 with some of those old songs. And there are too, it was all too, too much of a habit that it didn't matter what you said in a song as long as everybody, everybody loved each other at the end of it and kept, kept, not, kept white mice. <laughs> you know? I heard you say in an interview once, um, two things. Firstly, folk isn't fragile. And uh, the second thing you said was, you cannot do anything to damage traditional music yeah. except to not do it. Not sing it, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Not dance it. Yep. But would, would would you like to would you like to finish on a song? We have I'd, I'd say we have three three or four minutes left. Would you like to finish on a song? Uh, sure I can. Yeah, here's here's something that's adulterated. <laughs> With a cannonball, cannonball He ran a race with a cannonball Now Jack the lad, he went off to war I waved bye-bye as he ran out the door Says bye-bye John, when I see you again You'll be back from Iraq, from Afghanistan From the Taliban You'll be back from Iraq and Afghanistan I sat down each day on the shore for the space of seven long years or more Till a big transport come across the sky I shouted aloud, will you clear the way, clear the way I shouted aloud, will you clear the way Said, are you here with the living? Are you back with the dead? Did you see anything of my son John? Is the boy living or is he gone? Is he gone? Is the poor boy living or is he gone? Then up come John and he's got no legs, got carbon fibre blades instead. Smiled as she kissed him over and all I bet you run quicker than you did before You did before Bet you run quicker than you did before Oh, were you deaf? Were you blind? When you left your own two legs behind 
Or did you go walking upon the sea To shrink your two legs down to the knee Down to the knee For to shrink your two legs down to the knee Oh, I was not deaf and I was not blind But I left my own two legs behind Part of thundering landmine jumped in the way Wore these legs right down to the knee Down to the knee Wore these legs right down to the knee So much love, Martin Carthy. Thank you so much for joining us. We're really honoured to have you on the Thank stage you. with us. Thank you. Please come back at five o'clock. Martin Carthy's full set. Thank you. See you later. Thank you. Thank you, Martin. Scan your biscuits. <laughs> <laughs>